So today we're going to be taking a quick look at Pandas TA, which as it says here, is a TA library for Python 3 that you can use to very easily compute different indicators, candlestick patterns, lots of cool things like that. And the great thing about it, as the name would suggest, is that it plugs straight into Pandas. So let's say you've got a data frame with open, high, low, close data, and you want to compute something even like the simple moving average, exponential moving average, or one of these really exotic ones that they're having here. You can just plug this function straight in there and it'll just work rather than having to mess about extracting the series from the data frame, then putting that through a function that you've written, which might be full of bugs, so on and so forth. So I found that this library really simplifies things when I'm writing code for technical indicators. And it has a, a real large amount of indicators. If I scroll down here, you can see all these, these crazy ones here. I, I don't even know what most of them do. Um, so let's get started and I'll show you how to find your way around this library. I found the documentation to be somewhat sparse and the way they do things is kind of strange. So I'll try and guide you through that. So firstly, we'll just go here and we'll just create a Python file, call it tutorial.py. Okay, easy enough. And then let's go ahead and import both pandas as pd and we'll import pandas TA as TA. So obviously just importing both of our modules there. Now, the next thing you'll need is some kind of data source here. So if you don't have one, you can go to cryptodatadownload.com. This will give you information for, you know, like BTC, ETH, things like that, just so that you can follow along the tutorial. Obviously, if you've got Forex data, equities data, you're more than welcome to use that as well. But you can just download one of these on the daily time frame. You just open it up in Excel and you can see what's going on in here. So we've got the Unix timestamp, which is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970, just how computers deal with time. This is the actual date in a human readable format. Symbol, open, high, low, close, so on and so forth. So let's pull that information now into Python. So we'll say df for data frame is equal to pd.read underscore csv, just a very common pandas function here. We're going to open btc.csv because that's why I've called it. And I like to put the columns here that I'm extracting from the data frame here in double square brackets. It's mostly so I can remember what I've called the columns later on when I'm referencing them, but it also has the effect of making the data frame smaller so that when you print it out, it's not printing all these unnecessarily columns. So I'm going to import Unix open um, high, low, and close. I'm not going to do anything with the volume, although of course you're more than welcome to. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this. So as it stands, I believe the most recent data is going to be at the top of the data frame, which is not what we want when we're calculating moving averages. So to sort that out, all we have to do is do df dot sort underscore values. And then we just say by equals Unix. And then in place equals true just means that it changes the actual data frame rather than returning a new one. And then finally, just to complete our little data processing here, we'll say df date is equal to pd.2 underscore date time. And then we'll pass in df unix in here. And you've got to tell it that it's in seconds. So you say unit is equal to seconds. Because I think by default, it assumes it's in nanoseconds or milliseconds, and you'll end up with something weird in the date column. So let's go ahead and print out our data frame here, just so we can see what's happening. That seems right to me here. It's picked up that this is just daily data here. So we've got one result each day from 2014 till now. So that seems good to me. So we'll get started. So the first thing that we'll want to do here to start plotting out an indicator is to first identify the indicator that you're after. So I've identified the RSI here as the indicator that I'm gonna be calculating. So all you do is you can just copy this or just remember it. And we'll go through here. And to find the arguments that we need to input into the function, 
you can use the help command here, so ta.rsi or whatever yours happens to be. If we run this now, we'll get this nice little menu here in the terminal. I don't know what this will look like in other clients, but it should be relatively similar. You'll get this printout and we can go through here and you can see the arguments here. The only required argument is just the closing price here. There's all these other ones that have default values and we can obviously change those as we want. So let's go ahead and actually implement this now. So we can get rid of this help here. And we, there are a few different ways of doing this in Pandas TA. The first way would be to do it manually where we specify the arguments ourselves. So that would be DF RSI is equal to TA dot RSI. And then let's just specify the closing price here to be df.close. And we'll also specify the length just to be something different, just for fun. And then let's print that on out to make sure it works. There we go, we've got our RSI calculation here and that worked nicely. So this can be good if you want fine control over exactly what arguments you're putting into the function. But quite often, you can just pass in the data frame to Pandas TA. It has this inbuilt extension of the data frame. So I'll show you what I mean here. We could say DF RSI is equal to DF dot TA. So we're going inside data frame here. DF dot TA dot RSI. And if I just run that, we get exactly the same thing. So that's pretty cool in that it's inferring all of these columns. It will actually identify the open, high, low, close columns. Obviously, we have to specify the length if we want that to be something non-default. But this can be a very handy and simple way of writing things. And if you wanted to simplify it even further, you could get rid of this, you know, specifying the column over here. And you can set append equals true. And what that will do is it will automatically generate a column name and append that onto the data frame. So you can see here, this one's called RSI 10, obviously because it's the RSI of length 10. And so that can be really nice if you're wanting to generate hundreds of different columns, say, for different indicators and have them all appended onto the data frame so you can plot them later on. Speaking of plotting, let's just do some simple plotting here so that we can see what's actually happening, whether this is working, and just how easy it is to work in Pandas TA once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to import matplotlib.py plot just to do some simple plotting here. And what we'll do is we'll do plt.plot df.date versus df.rsi. And I guess we'll have to call it RSI underscore 10 here since that's the name of it. And then plt.show. This may or may not show up too well on the graph here, but there we go. So this is the length 10 RSI, the 10 day RSI. Obviously doesn't mean an awful lot to us just in abstract, but to show you just how easy it is to calculate any other particular indicator that you'd like, we can go through and calculate the SMA here. So let's do that. Let's just change this to SMA. And we'll plot on the price. So we'll do df.close. And this should just work fine. So this will change to SMA, obviously. So I'll plot that. We can see we've got the 10 day SMA over here. Now let's make this a bit of a larger time frame just so that we can actually see that it works. So we'll try the 100 day SMA here. And you can see that this is obviously functioning as the simple moving average. So every function in pandas TA is going to be like that, where you can use it, you know, by specifying a column that or you can let it automatically append the column name, you can specify the arguments manually. So you can specify you know, open is equal to this close is equal to this. That's very useful if you wanted to do some kind of manipulation to the open column before you passed it through. And you can also do something like df.ta.indicators and that will just give you a list of all the possible indicators. There are really lots of them in this package. 
And then of course you can go through and help individual indicator if you want to find some more information. So now that you know how to build simple indicators, I thought I'd show you how we can create different kinds of candlestick charts, again using Pandas TA, and it makes the process so much easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and calculate the Heikinashi candles, which are just a different form of candlestick charts that smooth out the candlesticks and just try and remove some of the volatility. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we can get rid of this stuff. We don't really need it. And let's go ahead and import Plotly because that's the graphing library that I like to use for candlesticks, at least to get things done quickly. So import Plotly dot graph objects as go. So let's define our figure over here. So we'll say fig is equal to go dot figure. And we'll say data is equal to go dot candle stick. And then we're ready to specify all our arguments. So let's say x axis is going to be equal to df dot to date. And then we'll need the open, which is equal to df dot open. And then high equal to df dot high. Low is equal to df dot low. And close is equal to df dot close. Okay, so that should be everything if we just close on out these brackets here. And then we'll do fig dot show. So this is just going to be a, just a normal candlestick chart here for the Bitcoin price data. That works relatively nicely. But obviously there's quite a lot of crazy things going on in this chart. It can be difficult to spot trends. And so in here, in Pandas TA, we have the Heikinashi candles and various other candlestick drawing techniques that are slightly different from what you normally get. So there's all of these ones here that you can use. So in order to draw the Heikinashi candles here, all we have to do is specify HADF, which is going to be our data frame full of Heikinashi data, is equal to TA.HA. And then I'll go ahead and specify all of the arguments here. So we'll say open is equal to df.open. They want you to use a underscore in front of here so it doesn't get confused with the file descriptor. So you can use df.open and then close is equal to df.close. We'll go ahead and fill the rest of these in here. i is equal to df.i and then low is equal to df.low. And that'll go ahead and calculate that out for us. So if I print it here, hadf, and then just close out of that, we don't need it. This calculates the Heikinashi candles for us. And then all we have to do here is just specify these names, so ha open, ha high, ha low, ha close. So I'll go through here and it's now hadf dot ha underscore open. So just repeat that for all of these here. And now when we draw that out, we've got high Kanashi candles here, which are much better at just showing a general trend. Now, the colors here are inverted. I think that's just a quirk of how high Kanashi candles are actually calculated. But these are the correct candles, they're just colored differently. So if you want to change the colors, all you have to do is go through here and you can just specify these as parameters. So you can say increasing line color is equal to, well, we'll invert them here. So we'll say red and then we'll pass this through as the decreasing line color. And we'll say that's equal to green. And there we go, you've got a nice Heikinashi candle chart. Again, there are lots of other options here. You can, you know, you can extract all of these different patterns. There's there's a million and one things that you can do with Pandas TA here. But I thought that I'd just show you how to get started quickly, how to use their internal documentation, how to plot any indicator that you're looking for, how to plot different kinds of candlesticks, basically everything you need to get started. So I hope you enjoyed the video and have fun.